Are we? This is Mighty Avengers 21 by Dan Slot of all people. This is really good. I felt like a proper dick when I said that every Avengers run since Barry Hamner's didn't really count or something to that effect. I was struggling to communicate exactly what I meant because I am a big autistic freak. I felt like that run, the Barry Hamner run, it was maybe like the last burst of sincere creativity and desire to write the Avengers. And that's not to say that everything after it is shit, although a lot of it is. I didn't mind Bob Patrick Harris's run, there's some good stuff in that, and then we've got stuff like this run, which I think is great. This is like the closest they got to being a proper Avengers book after years of Mike O'Brien Benson perverting the franchise and transforming it into his own sandbox for his limited ideas and his pet characters. And there is an advert for exactly that. This was him trying to claim the Thunderball's idea as his own absolute shit. The Avengers, they have got a long history and loads of characters that belong on the team or who should be on the team. But Benson, he ignored pretty much all of them. And the few that he did acknowledge, he morphed into horrible out-of-character versions like Orkai. And what Dan Slott does here is... He finally fucking gives Avengers fans an actual Avengers book. The team is made up entirely of classic members. Another criticism I have of a lot of modern Avengers runs is writers just forcing new members onto the team. Characters that they either created or characters that they wanted to write. Characters who probably shouldn't be on the Avengers, but they are made Avengers because it's what the writer wants. I'm thinking about stuff like Dead Pills and Cables. For this run, we have got one new member on the team, and that is Giant Girl. And unlike pretty much every other Avenger since 1998, she feels like she actually belongs on the team. She doesn't seem out of place, it makes sense. She has got a connection to at least three other Avengers. Her dad, obviously, is Paul Rudd, Ant-Man. Aunt Gordon is like her uncle, and she is currently ganning out with the Vision. Then we have also got Charlotte Witch. Her and the Vision, they're kind of like the backbone of the Avengers. And Benson, he killed one of them off and made the other one go crazy and become evil. So it makes sense for Dan Slott to bring them both back. And with the Vision, think back to your three favourite Avengers lineups. Vision, he was probably on at least two of them. I think he was like the most consistently appearing character in the first 500 issues of the book. We've got a loose page here, but what we've got is Charlotte Witch. She is gunning around the Marvel Universe. And she is picking people out to be on an Avengers team that will fight against what is basically the Rapture. Chiffon, the evil elder god, whose name I am saying right, because it's another one that nobody else does. He has been freed from his dimensional prison, and now the Earth is like gunning the shit. Loads of natural disasters and weird stuff like tidal waves of blood. Guest appearance here of Benson's Thunderbars rip-off. This is something else that Dan Slott did. He actually played with the wider Marvel Universe. He had Benson's teams make guest appearances. But predictably, Benson never returned a favour. And this book never received much exposure and pretty much failed. While all these weird, unbelievable, almost religious things are going on... Like the sea becoming fire, or San Francisco being encased in gold. We have got another strand with Alfred, the Avengers butler. He's also trying to bring some Avengers together. Did he something about all these chaotic events? He bumps into Hercules Man and Amadeus Cho. This is before he became the best version of the Hulk, obviously. Uh, actually, he's kind of... 
he's kind of a new member on the team as well. I didn't really consider him a very good addition. They have all gone in search of four. Meanwhile, Benson's Avengers with its one character who belongs on the team and its other character who he has transformed into a completely different person. They are fighting off some killer plants that are probably trying to rape them. And Charlotte Witch, she shows up looking for Captain America. But she sees that Bucky Man is Captain America now. And decides that he is not good enough and leaves. But Hawkeye, he spotted Charlotte Witch before she disappeared. Then she goes to Canada to get Us Agent. Uh, that is his name now. Flagman, I am retiring that name because it makes more sense for Flag Smasher. So he is called Us Agent now. Charlotte Witch, she gets Us Agent because he is better than Bucky Man. Then we have got Iron Man, Robert Downton Abbey Jr. He is independently trying to work out what is going on with the world. And he's able to determine the source of the problems. Then it's the Hulk. Charlotte Witch, she has come to get him, but, well, it's the Hulk, so, of course, he doesn't actually want to come with her. He doesn't want to join the Avengers, but she doesn't listen and takes him anyway. Unable to get a Fairyland, Hercules Man, Alfred and Amadeus Cho, they have instead gone in search of someone else who might be able to help out. And that someone is not Fembot here. But I'm sure she is just as welcome. They have come to get another founding Avenger. Aunt Gordon. Who is now in his best costume and calling himself the Wasps. In tribute to his dead ex-wife. Hercules man and Alfred. They tell him what's going on. And they try to convince him that he has got to put together a new Avengers team. To try and combat the things that are going on outside. But Aunt Gordon he's not up for it. He's kind of reluctant because he feels like he was never cut out to be an Avenger and he's not right to lead the team. Then we have got our answer to what is causing all these worldwide devastations. Magic Moore, he has been using the dark books and he has found a human vessel for the dark god Chiffon. He's also verbally abusing a token cow and that's not very nice of him. Here we have got some stuff with Hercules man. He's trying to inspire Aunt Gordon to lead the Avengers. And we get a bit of backstory that explains some of Aunt Gordon's inferiority complexes. He always felt that he was never really useful among the original Avengers. Iron Man, the Hulk and Thor, they were all stronger than him. And even when he became Gigantic Man... He still felt like he wasn't good enough. But he did manage to convince himself that his place on the Avengers was to be the brains of the outfit. And that he was like the smartest man in the room. But then one day, he saw Iron Man unmask. And he discovered that he was really Robert Downton Abbey Jr. And suddenly, Aunt Gordon, he realised he wasn't the only super genius on the team. Then we have got this great bit here that is just slamming Iron Man for all his awful decisions since Civil Wars. And this, at least to Aunt Gordon, coming to accept that maybe after all, he is the Avengers' resident genius. So they gone off to the epicenter of all the magic events. And Charlotte Witch, she is there waiting for them. She tells Aunt Gordon that she has gathered together a team of Avengers for him to lead. But they will only appear when he says the magic words. And the magic words are Avengers Assemble. And here is an amazing double splash page of this brilliant team. And Aunt Gordon accepting his place as one of the great Avengers and a rightful leader. So our team, it is Us Agent, Hulk, Aunt Gordon Leiden, Charlotte Witch, Giant Girl, Hercules Man, The Vision and Fembot with Alfred and Amadeus Cho in supporting roles.
Every character here, excluding Giant Girl, is a classic member of the team who has a long history fighting alongside them. And this was, and it still is, so refreshing to see after Benson and others have gone out of their way to push away and diminish characters from their history, made them into outright villains, put them into ugly costumes. I still get goosebumps when I read this and the page before where Aunt Gordon, he has to accept his place on the team. It's honestly brilliant. I wish... I wish that Dan Slott, he had just graduated to the main Avengers book instead of writing awful Spider-Man comics for years. Then, right at the end, we discover who has become the new host for Chiffon, and it's none other than The Flash. This all calls back to an odd Avengers story, where Charlotte Witch became the host. But yeah, we have got our story set up here, and it'll be continued next issue. Speaking of setup, that is all this really is if you want to get technical, but it is really great. It is a welcome breath of fresh air and the perfect antidote to Mike O'Brien Benson's Avengers. We got some great character stuff with Aunt Gordon. We have got a good plot with enormous stakes. We got a fantastic selection of team members. This cover, it's actually part of a set of covers that you put together and it makes one big image. I'll show it off when or if I ever get to the end of the story. This is getting seven thumbs up, no contest. 